today's episode, we'll take a look at creating edible gardens in your own home. We'll also get some tips on fermenting for beginners. And we also check out growing your own superfoods. Today's focus is all about healthy you and healthy food. I'm here today with Chris Ferreira as part of Sustainable House Day and Open Gardens Australia. And he's just given an amazing presentation talking about what to do in your garden, some, some great tips about using soils and how to enhance the soils. And now that it's spring, can you give um, our viewers um, some tips on what they should be doing in their garden right now? Getting ready for the onset of summer. So that means the, water, the soil will start to get dry as the first heat comes so making sure your soil is absorbent of water so wetting agents adding the clays to the soil getting the summer veggies in is a great thing to be doing making sure the irrigation is going to be working for summer all of those things and remulching the garden so that mulch is going to protect that soil from the worst effects of the sun in summer which is just around the corner and so some of the summer veggies, can you give us a few, I guess for some of the beginners as well, so just let us know what we should be planting. Yeah, corn is a ripper um, and starting to things like capsicum, the chilies as it warms up, they're great. Things like melons, zucchinis, they're all fabulous. Lettuce any time of the year is great. Tomatoes, a lot of the beans. It's a great time of the year for getting things to grow, but not good for the, bro the brassicas. This is the end for those guys. It's getting too warm for them. So no broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages or Brussels sprouts. Not that you'd ever want to plant Brussels sprouts. So. <laughs> well, up to personal preference there, I suppose. Um, so um, we've had a great look at some of the different ways you can do your home gardens and we'll be featuring some footage of that a bit later. So Chris is going to be one of our fabulous guest speakers at the Natural Health and Eco Lifestyle Expo. And I'm really excited because he's going to be talking about number one, um, how to grow a really good food garden and number two, the food theatre performance. So do you want to tell us a little bit about what people can expect yeah well the food theater is is riding on this passion for food and watching people prepare good food from jamie oliver to um, all the other amazing chefs that are out there but our message is the food is only as good as the way that it's grown processed packaged and what we do with the waste afterwards so we use food theatre to give three types of recipes not just the chef's recipes but the recipes on turning sand into soil and creating beautiful, nutritious, organic food. So when you put all of those into the mix, then you know that the food you're going to consume is of the best quality. And we weave in stories on why you wouldn't use plastics anymore in food, why would you go to the expense of getting organic or biodynamic food? And we will bring in, ideally, some of those providers of those products. So people learn that food is a passion, but it is also so integral to your overall health that you're conscientious about what you buy and what you make and how you grow it. So there's um, lots of information just there. So you can expect lots yeah, of great... Yes, poor Chris has been doing uh, lots of talking today um, and it's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day Thank and it's thanks for your time today. It's my pleasure. Good work. Thank you. Day today in a workshop with Sally Gray from Real Healthy Kids conducting a fermenting class. We covered a huge range of elements and topics today, um, all about gut health, fermenting, kefir, kombucha, all the latest trendy words. So yeah, I'm just going to have a quick word with Sally and she can just fill us in on some of the concepts we went through today. So an excellent place to start for a family to start to introduce these fermented foods is possibly with milk kefir. That's one of the fermented foods that has been quite widely researched and shown to be extremely powerful in its action. Milk kefir is something that's quite well tolerated and you can use a technique called double fermentation that actually makes it much more palatable. Milk kefir is great to get into smoothies for kids and is something that most kids will go for if it's in a smoothie kind of format. Another great way to start is with kvass and that can be with plain beet kvass or beet kvass and vegetables and other fruits in there to make it something that kids might go for and coconut kefirs to make as well and they're really enjoyed by kids and the important thing to remember is that the fermentation time is something that is adhered to because anything that is under fermented is likely to be too rich in sugars and that can be a problem for many people's health. 
But the idea is to get started with fermenting on some level because they are so powerfully supportive of gut and microbial health, which we now know is central to our health on every level, from physical well-being to emotional and mental well-being. So if the place to start is with a beak of us, and if that's the only place you go, that's great. Obviously, homemade yogurt is another really good place to start. And then you've got the, the option of straining that yogurt to create liquid whey, which is then used as the catalyst for a lot of ferments as well. I was actually really surprised about how um, versatile it is and how many things it can translate into in terms of fermentation. So if you want to quickly just talk a little bit, I know there's a lot there, um, just about some of the areas that you can use whey in, in terms of fermenting food and use it for beneficial health. Whey really is the secret to health. It's, it's been used as a legitimate therapy in and of itself for many, many decades. So drinking whey liquid that's been strained from yogurt or as a result of the cheese making process is something that's highly therapeutic. It's rich in lactic acid. So lactic acid is something that feeds the processes in the body and feeds beneficial bacteria and promotes further reactions that enhance gut cell capacity, function and integrity. So it's really vital and whey can be used to not only ferment and preserve foods from relishes and chutneys and sauces, but it can also be used to make probiotic tonics that you can drink. It's also used to make beet kvass. It can be added to sauerkrauts. It can be added to smoothies just as the whey itself. It can be consumed just as it is. And it's one of the most simple things that we can all incorporate in our homes and start giving to children straight away. We've just covered here today over the last six hours. It was a really amazing course. Sally also provided a great lunch with lots of uh, opportunities to sample the ferments and uh, different products that she has. So Sally Gray is going to be one of our guest speakers at the Natural Health and Eco Lifestyle Conference in February 2015. She's going to be presenting over in the conference section and then um, even doing a little uh, fermentation masterclass for us later at the exhibition. So thank you Sally for having me along today. I am now one step further along on my health journey. It's been really wonderful. And uh, please do go check out her website. Do you want to give a plug there? It's realhealthykids.com. So thanks again, Sally, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks. Down in Fremantle at a venue called The Raw Kitchen, I'm here to find out about how to grow your own superfood with sparkles. She's put together a course and brought together some samples, so everyone is going to go away with a few tips, a few tricks, and a lot more knowledge about how they can grow their own superfoods. So today was the first in a three-part series that we have running at the Raw Kitchen called Grow Your Own. And today we did our superfood masterclass where we went through all the different superfoods worldwide and what you can grow here and how to grow it. And everybody got take-home information and cuttings and seeds and so they're all going home to start their superfood forests. I'm looking forward to seeing those establish. If I was starting out with my superfood forest, I think my top contenders would have to be goji berry plant because it's so easy to just get those seeds germinating. You are waiting a little while, but it's, it's definitely worth the wait. Uh, chia seeds are great. All year round you can have them as sprouts. And I guess my other favourite would have to be carob. I know it's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a tree and it's quite a, a big tree, but it's certainly an amazing superfood that grows very, very well here. I think my top tips for growing superfoods of any type or growing food of any type is it all comes down to soil. So you've got to have good quality soil. Um, the more organic matter, the better. The higher the life concentration, the better good water retention, all those sorts of stuff. So just making sure that that soil, because that's the basis of the health of the plant and its disease resistance and all the other things. And then the second top tip I'd have is for most people, they don't understand that full sun doesn't really mean full sun in our climate here. So four hours of our sun in summertime is actually quite intense in comparison to somewhere like the Eastern States or even England where some of our seeds are coming from. So definitely that full sun only means about four to five hours of sunlight. 
I guess I started doing the Grow Your Own series because I was already teaching permaculture, but I noticed that the trending in food was, yes, to have these amazing annual gardens uh, or gardens full of annuals like your broccoli and your beetroot, but it's a lot of work. So I guess part of it was about how can we make people have healthy backyards but reduce the workload, but also increase the nutritional density. If you can grow something in the same space that requires less work and has more nutrition, then why not do it? So that's where, that's where this workshop series basically came from. So thank you for having me along today, Sparkles. I've actually learned quite a lot of information and I've got some seeds to take home with me to go and start my own super garden. We are really excited to have you. Sparkles is going to be one of our guest speakers in the expo area and we'll be doing a couple of classes for us. Um, she's actually going to do a quick short snapshot of growing your own master foods. So thanks again and we look forward to seeing you all soon. That's it for this week. My name is Ruth O'Dwyer and I've been reporting for the Healthy Vibe Gig Guide for Perth. It's brought to you by the NHL Conference, which is natural health and eco lifestyle. So do subscribe, check out the link below and also you can subscribe to our newsletter. I'll catch up with you next week. <laughs>